A very well-known businessman in Atlanta died suddenly some years ago. His name was Greg Simmons. Greg Simmons died in 1989 at the age of 41. He bought a beautiful home in Highlands, North Carolina, a father of five children. The youngest one was less than a year old. The oldest one was just 12, Gregory Jr. And Gregory Jr. one day said, Dad, we've been here this long. You've never taken us to the top to see what it is like up there so we can see the waterfall from up there. So Gregory took his four children, a friend of his and his son. So there were seven of them, and they went up. And all of a sudden, they were looking at some uncertain terrain. And Greg Simmons put his arm out to stop his little ones from coming till he had tested it out. And he puts his foot forward, set it into some soft soil without realizing how much of his weight he placed on that foot. And he came cartwheeling down a quarter of a mile to his death. A man highly successful in the heyday of his business career. Listen to what his 12-year-old son says about that incident, writing to a friend. Bear in mind, this is a 12-year-old, so one or two lines are not too close. Clear, but it's beautifully written. Dear Mrs. Wheeland, you don't know how much your family helped produce my father. He admired your husband and you a lot. He would talk about how good your faith was with God. He tried to be as generous as you all have been to the church and to many other good things. Since his death, his true friends were revealed. Your family was at the top of our list. You were a great source of energy for my mother and I. My father loved you very much and was always trying to be like you. My father was like one of the three men in the Bible who were given the talents by Jesus. One went out and invested them and multiplied them. One took some stock that failed and came back with nothing. The last one buried them and did nothing with them. All three returned in a few days and the Lord was pleased with the two who had tried to multiply them. But the third man had come back with the same amount. The Lord was disappointed with him because he didn't try. My father multiplied and lost many things, but he was always trying to please the Lord. He got a lot of that, Ms. Whelan, from your family. My dad was a risk taker. That's just the way he was. No one will understand how or why my dad fell into the waterfall. Do yourself a favor. Don't try to figure it out, please. My dad died for his children. He was making sure it was safe for us to come up. You may hear different things, but only six people saw it, and only three understand or understood what really happened. Ms. Wieland, I am one of those. My mom lost her treasure chest, her husband. Most of the others lost Greg. You lost a best friend. My grandparents lost their son. Forrest John and Barbara lost their brother. But Ms. Wieland, it is different for me. Totally different for me. He was my best friend, my idol. But when I got my last glimpse of him falling down the falls, I lost my most prized man on earth. He was my father, my one and only dad. I had a dream three nights ago, but it wasn't a dream. My father is all right. He told me himself. Thank you, Ms. Whelan, for being a true friend. I love you a lot. Gregory M. Simmons, Jr. Tiger, tiger, shining bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye has framed thy fearful symmetry. So said William Blake, the fearful symmetry of life, how in the darkest night of the soul the brightest light shines, holy, seeming so far, Father, so near, your God and my God is our holy Father. That's why we bend our knee and come to him with a sovereignty that is so kind and say, dear, holy Father, 